It's the day after Facebook went IPO, and I'm trying to get around to San Francisco tech companies that I haven't visited for a while, and the one that is stumble upon. They have 25 million people a month, all checking out new kinds of content and doing it in a far different way than Facebook or Twitter, and so I wanted to find out what's going on here. Who are you? Hi, I am Mark Leibowitz. I am the Vice President for Marketing Partnerships and a variety of other responsibilities here. I've been at StumbleUpon for a little over two years now. Um, I uh, got sold on the concept uh, after spending about seven years at that search engine uh, down in Mountain View uh, and was looking around for gifts uh, actually for family members and I'm maybe among the world's worst gift givers uh, so I was having a hard time coming up with ideas. Uh, wound up going to stumble upon after having spent a little time getting to know the founders here uh, and very quickly discovered some really interesting ideas that I would never have actually found uh, or hadn't found up to that point just by using a search engine. Um, and, and by doing that, it convinced me that there was a big opportunity here uh, to do something that search didn't really do very effectively. And who are you? I am uh, Jack Kroftrick, and I head up our product marketing efforts on the uh, business solution side of StumbleUpon. And I came here just because uh, I wanted to work on an advertising platform that could actually make a difference because uh, the reason I work in advertising is because I hate the way that advertising works. And the model that we've built at StumbleUpon is one of those things where you can really make a difference as a, as a content creator and make a connection with somebody uh, in a way that you never could before in former mediums. So it's been uh, it's been a fun fun ride so far. And uh, I also came from uh, that search engine company down in Mountain View. Like I think a quarter of us have. So it, you know th this is the Monday after Facebook's IPO, and and people sort of understand what Facebook is and. I haven't heard a whole lot about StumbleUpon lately. I, I know you went to eBay and then spun out, and I, I haven't been back here since, so I wanted to see what, what was going on and what you were noticing happen in the marketplace. We are just focused on building a world-class discovery engine. Um, and what that means is uh, trying to help people cut through all the clutter of information uh, that is uh, constantly being generated as the barriers to content production have gone down more and more stuff gets created every day. It becomes harder and harder to find the things that you really care about uh, on the web. And I think search is great when you have a very clear intent and it's purposeful and intent, and, uh, intent driven. Uh, but when you're just looking for inspiration, looking for ideas, uh, you're looking, f you don't have a particular keyword in mind. Uh, I think yeah. that's where StumbleUpon fits in. Um, the company's been around for a while uh, and for a long time folks didn't really know sort of where it fit in. I think over the last few years we've seen more and more companies sprout up, uh, I, either as generalists or specific to particular vertical uh, content verticals that are powering this discovery experience. Um, and so that's really sort of validated for us that we're on to something big. I don't think anyone including us have really solved that problem effectively yet, uh, but uh, we hope that we can be that company that becomes synonymous with discovery because we think it's a big we, opportunity. Yeah, that's, Which, go ahead. I was just going to say, we kind of like to think about it as we're like a giant slot machine for the internet, right? <laughs> you never know. You never know what you're going to get when you pull down that lever, but then it just pays out this jackpot, and all of a sudden you're there, and you're just thinking to yourself, like, "Holy crap, that was actually kind of awesome!" And then you go out and talk about it with your friends and do all these sorts of things. So, I always, you know, whenever we go and have these sort of agency meetings or whatever it is, we kind of get out there and say, you know, "StumbleUpon is the slot machine for the internet that pays about 1.2 billion jackpots each month," which is the amount of uh, <laughs> traffic that we refer each month, and it's kind of it's kind of like this this fun tool that yeah. I, I don't know. At least for me, like there's there's nothing else that kind of gets me excited to find stuff on the internet, and so that's why I think that's why the both of us are here. Yeah, no, and without taking anything away from that, I think the uh, oh. it, the important thing for us is to get better and better at making the each of those jackpots very relevant uh, and give users a, a clear sense of why they're seeing that. I think for a long time, there was a perception that StumbleUpon was essentially a random website generator. And the reality is that it couldn't be further from the truth. Every pull of that jackpot arm, uh, or that uh, slot arm, uh, actually triggers a enormous amount of computation uh, that goes on doing all sorts of analysis of 
30 billion odd pieces of data uh, to generate a specific recommendation uh, for that user. And again, we're a long ways from doing that perfectly, uh, but that's what we obsess about and focus on every day. So you're really keeping track of what kinds of things I engage with and what kinds of things I like. Mm -hmm. uh, is that true? And so you're Within sort of the context like of StumbleUpon, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not tracking people as they're moving across the web, but as they're interacting with StumbleUpon, yes. Right. And, and that's sort of similar to what Facebook is doing and, and Google Plus is trying to do, but Facebook is really there that they're trying to bring content to you based on who you are, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan, I'm going to see content about the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not going to see New York Jets, right? Mm -hmm. And it knows that, so it brings... Are you guys doing the same kinds of things? So there's... Uh, and one of the things that we really want to figure out, so on the, on the Facebook side of things, it's very much... Uh, your sort of social engagements and the people that you're talking to on a day-to-day -day basis and that you want to necessarily share with. But we also know that there's a certain side of, let's say you want to be inspired or educated, things that you don't necessarily talk about with your friends. Yeah. But let's say, let's say you're really big into photography and you just want to find this, you just want to find something to inspire you to find a new way to sort of move your lens or play with focus or whatever it might be. You come to something like StumbleUpon so that you can just go through all of these different things in photography and eventually we have so many different signals that we can figure out. We can figure out how much time you spend on a certain piece of content, whether or not you share it out to another social network or email or whatever it might be, uh, and then we allow you to give it a thumb up or thumb down. So you can imagine all the sort of millions and billions of data points that we can create and it sort of filters into this world of we're sort of mapping the way that your brain works in terms of combining your interests with your social graphs. And the social component is definitely a big part of it, but we're trying to sort of kind of map your brain in a way that you can't sort of get from just knowing somebody externally. And this, this data is very valuable. I mean, Instagram went for a billion dollars, I think in part because of the data that it was collecting underneath each photo and they knew whether you liked it or viewed it or, Whatnot, and you, they knew your social graph there, right? That data is worth something to Mark Zuckerberg, and clearly a billion dollars, right? <laughs> if we're talking about things in the billions, I mean, we have 30 billion data points, yeah. and that's what, I mean, we have a team of PhDs that are basically looking at this stuff and making all these crazy regression models that I can only talk about but not understand <laughs> that actually formulate these recommendations in a way that I don't think anybody else even has the capacity to do. I'm going to throw a thesis out there that the that the press sort of ignores you guys because journalists like me, like I have three screens and I've built out my social graph so that it brings me content. I, I've spent a lot of time on that. I have a feeling your users and, and even Facebook's users are more like my dad. Has five friends on Facebook, doesn't know where to go on the internet to find cool stuff. And I think that's essentially the point uh, that you're making, which is curation, feeds, like these things don't mean anything uh, yeah. to a very large number of people. And I think that's where StumbleUpon comes in. You don't have to do it, uh, any curation. Just yeah. tell us some very basic things about yourself, age, uh, gender, tell us a handful of interests that you might be, inter might, might be inclined to learn more about, very high level interests, and we'll quickly learn better about what you want to see and we'll, we'll really push the exploration side of things. You were going back to the example you used before about the uh, you said you like the 49ers, and so you get a lot of 49ers content. I think what we're trying to do is say, you like the 49ers. Well, it turns out that people that like the 49ers that are of roughly the same age, gender, live in the same area, also tend to like these other things that you hadn't really necessarily considered, and yeah. we're going to suggest them to you and then see how you react to those kinds of things. So the exploration part of StumbleUpon is another important thing, and I think that also feeds this idea of uh, a, uh, a slot machine type mentality. Um, but again, yeah. it's, it's a very intentional, very uh, uh, algorithmic determination uh, that we're making. Yeah. I mean, even like on the yeah. sort of conceptual level and sort of building on that of, you know, we, we have all of these different lever levers that are moving around and, mm -hmm. um, and, and making these recommendations. But in reality, where we, s where we strive is uh, at this point really the type B personality, that sort of the type A person that needs a ton of control, that picks all their followers That's and me. does all those stuff, <laughs> that happen to have a name that is Robert Scoble, uh, they, they're going out there and you know, wanting to curate and do all that stuff. Someone with a type B personality is just kind of going to lean back, maybe get a little, uh, I, I don't know, challenged, frustrated, whatever it might be with all the different things that you have to do. 
we make it really easy where we say there's one button in your browser that you have to press. It's the forward button for the internet. And you're just going to find something that's totally awesome. You know what? Like, sometimes the jackpot may pay out a couple of pennies, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's yeah. not going to be the best. But then all of a sudden, you get this one that just sort of changes your perspective on the world. I found this TED Talk last week yep. called Perspective is Everything. Yep. It's by this guy, Rory Sutherland. Uh, not sure if you've seen any of his I TED Talks. I have. And uh, this thing, I mean, it has completely changed my entire approach into product development simply by saying, simply just by thinking about the things that he said. Uh, where you know you can force all of this engineering effort into fixing your core problem when you sometimes just need to clean up the house around you. Yeah. And uh, and it's really got me thinking. And that's something that I found on StumbleUpon that I wouldn't have necessarily found anywhere else. And you know I'm probably somewhere in between the Type A and Type B yeah. personality. But y you would have only found it if you have lots of friends who are into TED videos and into finding cool stuff like this, mm -hmm. which. Like, I, I saw that, that video come into Facebook, but my dad didn't. Because yeah. my dad doesn't have those kinds of friends mm -hmm. and hasn't built the social graphs and hasn't clicked mm -hmm. like on a lot of brands or a lot of media things and hasn't taught Facebook what he's all about. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a beautiful thing for us where, mm -hmm. sure, we love thumb up and thumb down data, but because we can, we, we can basically control the navigation that somebody does. I mean, we are your navigational element. The stumble button is how you move forward on the internet. And what we can see from the most passive perspective is how long did you spend on this piece of content versus another piece of content? So yeah. in the most pa passive capacity, sure, we love that like button. But if we don't get it, we've still got some really valuable data that's come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And you know if they clicked on that page or anything like that. That's what's really interesting. You know, Jack Dorsey says, uh, I, I think he said it at one of the conferences I was at, is building something simple is really hard. <laughs> so, you know, building something that is mm -hmm. a, a jackpot, jack you know, mm -hmm. is a lottery machine, is a <laughs> slot machine. Yes, exactly. It's hard. We're mm -hmm. moving from penny slots to nickel slots yeah. to the big high roller. And <laughs> as <laughs> as <laughs> you <laughs> walked me around, you know, you, you guys have some of the top data scientists in the world here, right? It's uh, who built HBase and stuff like that. T tell me about building this kind of company that, that has that kind of corporate culture on the surface, it has to look simple to the user, but behind the scenes, it's like you got to do some really advanced uh, crunching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can pretend to know what I'm talking about when it comes <laughs> to HBase and Hadoop and all those great things, but I mean, in, in reality, we, we are really passionate about understanding the relationships between data, and so we have two of the seven HBase committers in the world working here as guys that really understand the way that data works because at the uh, you know at the end of the day we're only as good as the recommendations that we mm -hmm. can make and we've invested a lot a lot into understanding how those relationships work and so in order to do that you need to hire the top talent which we feel like we have and we're definitely looking to continue to do that yeah last time I was here it was when uh, Garrett w and I think Jeff, Jeff yeah. were in a smaller office, and it was four, <laughs> four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and it was before you guys got b bought by eBay. It, it was before the iPad. Mm -hmm. It was before the iPhone really got mm -hmm. popular. You guys have been <laughs> around a little bit at yeah. the time now. How, are the, how are, is the mobile world shifting what you guys are thinking of and, and how your customers are expecting to get that next button now? Obviously, more and more people are consuming content, interacting with others around that content on mobile devices. We're no exception. We've seen that grow rapidly. Um, and so now we have uh, mobile applications for Android and iOS. Um, in particular, uh, tablets are great for us. It's a perfect lean back consumptive experience. Uh, and so we've invested heavily there. Um, we're looking at other platforms uh, that we can expand into. Uh, we're trying to better understand how people consume the content that they consume through StumbleUpon on different mobile devices. We know, for example, that uh, on tablets, people use, at least for StumbleUpon, they use their tablets to stumble during prime time, uh, yeah. typical prime time hours. And on smartphones, they consume content during commute hours. Um, those ne aren't necessarily breakthrough uh, uh, realizations, but it does help us better recommend content, because we know if you're... Do you, do you recommend different content based yeah, on the so time Yeah, so that's where we're moving. Um, we're starting to do some experiments around that. Uh, yeah. So we know if you're on a bus and you've got 15, 20 minutes of time and are really sort of in a work mood, you want a different sort of content than you do if you're sitting at home with your feet up uh, and a glass of wine or uh, beverage of choice 
uh, you're looking for something very different. Um, yeah. So we're trying to play around with those types of time of day and mood. Can you tell it to only bring me results like on, on American Idol? You know, <laughs> if I'm watching American Idol, maybe I want to go through all the American Idol blogs that are out there, you know, and just keep hitting next, 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 and see what people are talking about tonight. Yeah. So uh, we is that something I can do? Let's yeah, know. so we launched uh, last summer uh, what we call our Explore Box, where it's kind of more of the open-ended serendipity excursion. And so <laughs> American Idol is something that you can type in there and find. My personal favorite is Kanye West. Uh, there is a treasure trove of Kanye West content across <laughs> the internet. I highly recommend. If, if you're going to go back and do one thing when you get back to your, your desk, Explore Box Kanye West. Okay. It's phenomenal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That'll pollute my uh, social graph. I'll be dating <laughs> more yeah. Kanye West yeah. stuff. <laughs> I mean, you find stuff like, I mean, we were, we were talking about memes before we hopped yeah. on uh, hopped on the film, but uh, I just found the greatest meme that I've seen in a long time where Kanye West, it shows Kanye West looking in one direction. It says Kanye West directly below it, flipped image, and it says Kanye East right below it. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> We're serving as this sort of inception point, this sort of launching point for people to discover cool content yeah. so that they can then go to the services where they're sort of curating their image, which you know, Facebook has really served as the largest, uh, the largest portion of our outbound sharing at this point. Uh, but you know, when, when you're crafting your image on Twitter, you know, we allow you to share to LinkedIn. And um, it's really just about, the reason that we share content is a form of self-expression. Yeah. It's either I want you to think more of me, I want you to uh, to sort of share more stuff like that you're doing uh, with me because I'm sharing it with you, and it sort of gets into this uh, this sort of zone. And so, there well, really it's also a, uh, a, an identity, right? We wear San Francisco mm -hmm. 49ers jackets, or our favorite sports team, or favorite NASCAR drivers' jackets, or clothes, because we try to have that identity. Well, e exactly. I mean, like mm -hmm. when, when I used to work in finance, I mean, I would get fired for not shaving, not combing my hair, not having a tie, not, wow, I really did a lot of things. Now you do finance. all of the above. Yeah, now, now <laughs> I'm just a total rebel and don't get my hair cut. Uh, but it really is a reflection of mm -hmm. how, I, how I see myself professionally in the way that I dress. And yeah. it really translates itself into content. Content is just another area for that. You guys mm -hmm. just uh, talk about Facebook. You just made a deal with uh, Facebook for the Open Graph, or you're using the Facebook Open Graph right. API, right. I guess. Tell me, how that's only been up for, what, a, a week or two? A couple uh, of weeks, maybe three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we're trying to do is take advantage of the way that Facebook allows developers to uh, bundle uh, activity together. Uh, so we will post multiple things, multiple activities on, uh, on StumbleUpon into a single post. And so there'll be things like uh, pages that you've thumbed up, uh, pages that you've shared, interests that you're now following uh, are all now packaged together and, and served into the Facebook timeline. Uh, yeah. and it allows people to very quickly see the sorts of things that you're into uh, and then click on those and we'll actually take them through an, an experience of stumbling. The person whose link you clicked on, you can see that their other favorites. I get this question all the time from kids around the world, you know, how, how, do, I, how do I become a media thing? How do I build a, a distribution network? And um, on StumbleUpon, what do you tell, if, if, if somebody's starting a blog today, is there something that they should do to get known in StumbleUpon? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, a variety of you know, products that you can introduce into your website. The, the biggest challenge of um, any blogger uh, that they'll have with StumbleUpon is just getting into our index. Yeah. And so we don't necessarily allow people to sign up for an account and then only promote themselves, because that to us is a spammer. We rely on our community to produce really great mm -hmm. content. So uh, we, we have blog relationships where we say, Install our, install our button. We have some other navigational elements that you can install into your website and just sort of keep that sort of StumbleUpon ecosystem going because as more people are exposed to your content within StumbleUpon, it then gets the ability to be rated and things with good ratings tend to take off. And I that's think that's true on all, all the networks, you know, whether it be Twitter or, or Facebook. If if you reshare other people's stuff, it seems to let your stuff go into the stream as well, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> there's, there's really, I mean, there's three mm -hmm. stages of yeah. any form of content distribution. First, it has to be discovered. Somehow, someone had to find this thing that was produced. And then if it's good enough, they're gonna go out and share it. And so you do that through a variety, a variety of methods. And then we have this third piece, which is that sort of amplification, which is where a lot of our paid offerings are going. And 
That's what we, I mean, most often that conversation happens with marketers, but you really have the ability through you know, a lot of products like the sponsored stories, we have paid discovery here at StumbleUpon to drive that out in a way that's sort of native to what you're already doing. Yeah. And it's, it's can individuals use that? And c can individuals pay to get a, a blog seen by other people? Or yeah. So yeah. we have a completely open ad yeah. platform, and we now have seventy-five thousand advertisers on our system. So because it's interesting, Facebook is playing with something similar. They're testing it in Australia, and people went ape shit. And, you know, it's like, oh, what, what do you mean people are going to pay to have me see content by them? There's it's like. Advertisers mm -hmm. do that all the time. It's on the right side. There's, you know? a, fine, there's <laughs> a fine line we walk between sort of stroking our own ego by getting likes and then sort of mm -hmm. like forcing somebody to listen to it. I think it's, yeah. I think that's just in general how we sort of go about it. And that's not particular to any one platform. But as we think of any form of you know, revenue generating programs, we want it to be natively integrated into what it is that you're already doing. So. The thing that you do on StumbleUpon is you go from web page to web page to web page. So we figure, let's make a web page something that we monetize, and that's mm -hmm. how we built, so we built our ad platform. Right? Yeah, oh. I mean we use the exact same uh, methodologies to recommend and rate uh, paid content that comes in through paid discovery as we do the organic stuff. So it's subject to the same vagaries and uh, interactive uh, elements as the organic stuff. And at the end of the day, good content wins whether it's paid for or surfaces organically. Um, so that's what we're all about, just find the best stuff on the web. Very cool. Thanks for uh, spending a little bit of time with me explaining what's going on in your business. It's Absolutely. really, really interesting out. stuff. So yeah. We find pleasure. it at, where, where do we find it? StumbleUpon? Yeah. Uh, well, StumbleUpon.com is a great place to start. Um, yeah. And from there, you can learn more about our uh, browser extensions. We support Chrome. Uh, Firefox and Mozilla, uh, as well as our mobile apps for Android and iOS, or you can just stumble through the uh, the web service at fromstumbleupon.com. Very cool. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.